Okay, so we're back. Um, we're over here at the router table. I got set up now for um, doing thicknessing. Now, some people like to use planers, it's all different kinds of planers for doing it. I always find that a planer leaves what's called snipe, which is a, a deeper cut on the ends. It's just a, a, a function of how the roller is pressed down on the piece as it moves through the machine and kind of lifts up one side or the other and feeds the, um, the material into the uh, planer blades a little bit deeper uh, on the ends. So, and then you end up having to spend about two hours sanding that out. So what I like to do, unless I'm doing a really long board, is use this box, which is just a planing box. So it's some MDF. We have the body double stick tape down in there. Um, we've got this sled on top with the, um, the router base attached to it. Um, so you're secured with the screws into the plate. And uh, the router goes in there and then you just kind of surface it, right? Now the bit I like to use is this guy right here. Um, it's kind of a, it's made for this sort of a thing, for surfacing. Um, it's like a fly cutter, something like that, like in milling. Um, and I think this one's made by, uh, I don't know, Whiteside or somebody, I don't know, CRL, I don't know. In any case, it goes in the old Milwaukee here, and uh, then we can just go ahead and plane. So I'm going to go and chuck up our bit. Um, and as always, use safety. I mean, the temptation is to get as much bit sticking out as possible, but you want to have, I like to have a half an inch in the chuck. If you don't got half inch in the chuck, you better be wearing body armor. All right, so uh, I'll chuck this up and then we'll start planing. Okay, so we're back. Uh, we got the bit chucked in. Uh, I zeroed it in on the, the body itself and from prior measurements with our ruler, we determined that we needed to move uh, 1 16th of material to bring it down to our final dimension of 1.75, 1 3 quarters. So we used our little um, plunge uh, gauge here to dial in a 16th. Everything's very secure. We got our router plugged in. I guess the next thing is, uh, you know, which way are you gonna route? Um, the blade turns obviously in one direction. The bit turns in one direction. I prefer to, uh, on smoother cuts like this, it's not so, I mean, when you're taking off a 16th or something like that, it doesn't really matter too much whether you're doing what's called climb milling or not. But climb milling is basically when you're going in the same direction that the blade wants to go in. So it kind of powers it along. Um, has a tendency to get away from you in certain situations. If you climb mill, let's say when you're trying to route out this entire body thickness at once, you're gonna be in for trouble. It's gonna grab, it's gonna throw, it's gonna wanna pull it away from you and it can be really dangerous. But in a situation like this, I'm just basically gonna go back and forth and we won't have any problems and being that it's such a light cut I don't anticipate any tear out or any issues like that. All right, so we're gonna uh, just queue up the router. Got our earring protection in, we got our uh, mask on and our safety glasses on. And we're just gonna go ahead and start, uh, start chewing away at this thing. Okay, you can see that pretty much makes quick work of it. Um, we can see that we're basically down to where we want to be. Let's take out our ruler, double check that we are where we want to be at, and we're right there. Okay, so uh, 
We're going to remove this from the carriage. And the next step is going to be to uh, load up the router table with a top bearing get bit. And we're going to do the outline. So uh, I'm going to take this all apart and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we're back. Um, we got the body out of the uh, little sled thicknesser. Um, the next shed, the next step is to uh, basically, you know, bring the uh, bring it to its actual shape. We're going to use a router bit for that, and this is the bit we're using. It's actually a spiral cut with the top bearing. Um, it's a down cut, so it tends to bring all the material through the router table and uh, makes it for a little less mess. If you had an upcut, I guess it might start blowing all the wood chips in your face. That may not be fun. But anyway, it's a long piece, so it really allows you to, uh, to get in there. So the bearing's going to follow the plexi, and as you can see, we've got plenty of, uh, of blade to go ahead and cut. Um, and that's what I was talking about before is this climb milling thing. You don't want to climb mill in these cases. You don't want the bit spinning this way, right? While you're feeding it this way. It will just zip and it'll whoosh, take off. And if you catch it, it might dig in and then blow a big chunk out of your piece. Um, also, when you're routing, you'll notice, well, spiral cuts... They have less tendency to have major blowouts because if you look at any given point, they're really only cutting a small section. So it's like shaving at an angle. So it, if it was a straight cut, a straight bit where there's just one blade and another blade, another blade that's you know basically straight up and down that's removing material in the exact same place, um, has a tendency to want to blow out big chunks, especially when you, what you're doing was when you're going into the grain. So you see like in areas like here, if you're gonna route here, the blade is trying to cut into where the grain is and it can catch and blow a big chunk out. And then, you know, there goes your wood. You're gonna spend a lot of time trying to match the piece again, cutting a piece off, gluing another piece on, rerouting, doing the whole nine yards again. So it's a giant pain in the butt. So what you really recommend, what I recommend you do is use a, a spiral cut and then a little strategy when you're uh, when you're deciding how to cut. For instance, in an area like this, I might cut like this. Go, um, in a sense, cut here, then go here, and then here. So I'm removing material that could possibly be used as leverage to break out a bigger piece. Um, same thing with here. You have a huge chance of blowing something out right there. That's where, if you're going to blow something out, usually that's where you do it. So what I like to do is come here and just start not climb milling, going into it, going into the blade's work pattern or, or the, its spin and gradually take a little more and more and more off moving backwards. And that will allow for a very you know, reliable cut there without blowing anything up. On inside turns, you never really have to worry about much other than burn. Um, so that's really all there is to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we're using the same router that we used before, uh, just a Milwaukee. I like it, uh, you know, it's a cool deal. All right, so I'm gonna load all this up and then we're gonna go and ahead and route this. Okay, so we're back. Um, got the bit chucked in there. Got it set to the right height. Um, I've got the speed set on four. So it's, you know, a little slower than its maximum. I think it goes up to six. I can't remember. But it's a couple of steps down off of maximum speed. That helps with um, basically chatter and burn. So uh, a rule of milling that I learned doing like metal work um, is that, you know, if you experience chatter, which is the bit kind of knocking and vibrating up against the uh, piece, uh, the method is to decrease speed or increase feed. So either slow down the, the, uh, the spin rate of the uh, cutter or you increase the feed of it um, in terms of pressure and all this other kind of stuff. I don't like doing that. So I just would rather decrease speed, get everything where it runs kind of good. And I found that four on this seems to work good with all different kinds of wood. So I've got it on a four. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and start cutting. Um, and maybe you'll be able to see something. I might be in the way, but I'm not gonna kind of lean around to get a good shot because this is, you know, it's dangerous working with these tools. So safety first. Again, I got my hearing in, my plugs in, glasses on, and uh, here, and uh, some uh, breathing protection here, a little mask. All right, so here we go. That turned out really nice. Um, I gotta say, if there's one thing that makes this job a lot easier, it's when the guys who give you the wood actually know what they're doing and dry it correctly. So I gotta say, those guys at Quality Woods on eBay, this this machine's like cheese, as one of my friends would like to say. It just machined beautifully. Um, the chips, you can see, very uniform. Um, there was no chatter. Um, it just peeled off. Uh, we have basically no burnout anywhere. No burn. Uh, no tear out. A lot of that also has to do with that bit. I mean, that's a great bit, the spiral cut. But we have no tear out, no chatter. Um, just great. Couldn't have turned out better. All right, so the next step after this is going to be, I got this little goofy um, pin router. That's really just, you know, 
a hobby thing. A lot of the tools I've got are, you know, they're pretty industrial, but a pin router, maybe one day. I'd rather have a Bridgeport mill first. So uh, I'm going to put the pin router up here, and then we're going to do this cavity and this cavity. And uh, we'll see you in a couple.